This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Now, Dave East was on a flight headed to, uh, headed from, he was removed from a flight headed to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And this was on Friday. And he wrote on Instagram racism and he posted a three minute video of his experience on Delta. He said, F Delta, racist ain't even the word. This Jamaican man defending me and he don't even know me. He watched the racist harassment. Listen to this. It's called racism. It's okay. No, I'm going I'm to I'm get off the plane. I'm going to get off. Damn, the whole force came? Where the lady that got me off the plane at? She hot enough? For all this going on on the news, black people getting shot every day. Y'all do this on an airplane. You got people on the airplane that I don't even know that's getting up and defending me, bro. He also said crazy, Delta though. Airlines... Y'all need to stop hiring these racist, stupid, ignorant Trump supporters that get nervous when they see a person of color in first class. Bitch, just ask me what I want to drink and keep it pushing. Ish got me hot. Yeah, I Do we what know happens. what caused that, though? Do we yeah. know what sparked all that off? We don't know. According to Dave East, what he's saying is that a woman got nervous seeing a black man in first class. And he did say a stranger tried to defuse the situation and allow him to fly, but he had to exit the plane. That's when he was greeted by more than six officers from the New York Port Authority waiting on him. I wonder how you could get nervous. I got my first class seat. In, in Delta right now, there's nobody sitting next to you, so why the hell are you so damn nervous? Well, I'm sure Delta will put out uh, the, another side of the story once they see all the bad press that they're getting. I'm sure we'll be seeing that soon. Right. I mean, look, I fly Delta all the time, so I don't know what actually went down, whatever, but I guess we'll see. Mm-hmm. All right, boxer Javante Davis. He just admitted that he was wrong for getting violent with his ex girlfriend back in February. We all saw the video. They were at a celebrity basketball game in Miami, and he was aggressively grabbing her. They have a child together. People were very disturbed by that footage. Well, now Javante was on the Last Stand podcast with Brian Custer, and he said he wished he would have th- done things differently. I've been around my baby mother for like six six years now. So we have a chemistry, right? I love her like I love her. And I'm overprotective. So once I said I heard that she was at that game and I told her, I said, You need to get out of there. And that's my baby mother. I take I, I look at after and things like that. Like I make sure she's good. And uh, again, I love her. So once I, w- I was just mad, and once I seen her, it's not I grabbed her by her neck. I just told, her, like, I grabbed her like I should, like you got to you got to get out of here type type thing. Like, and I probably was wrong for doing that. I was wrong for doing that. Yeah, I mean, regardless of how you think uh, Javante Davis sounds, he's admitting he was wrong for doing that, and he's going to mm-hmm. get professional help. Like that's all you can ask for a person to do in life: hold himself accountable. And go get some healing. Hurt people, hurt people. Clearly, something is going on with that brother, and, and he wants to fix it. And we have to get a place. We have to get to a place where we, we allow people to make mistakes. Right. Period. Yeah, he did say he has a little anger problem, and he's saying he didn't strike her with his fist. He grabbed her shirt, but he said he should not have done that. Still, I mean, I would All think right, right but- that a boxer, a boxer would always have like. Some type anger of problems. Anger yeah, because you're kind of right. trained yeah. to fight. Like, you're yeah. trained to use that anger to win, right? So, yeah. But it doesn't make it right. No, not at all. All right, well, he is going to be fighting next month, by the way. He's set to fight Leo San- Santa Cruz in another championship fight. Big Sean's Detroit 2 has debuted at number one. That's his third number one album. So congratulations to Big Sean. 103,000 units sold in the U.S. in the first week. That's good. And Big Sean's been around a long time. What's the, what, what, what number of albums is this for Sean? I'm not sure. Is this four or five? It's got to be about five, fourth or fifth, right? But either way, it's like he's been around a long time. So when you've been around this long and you're still getting number one, that says a lot about, you know, who you are as an artist. Yeah, this could possibly be his last album on Def Jam and uh, Good Music, right? I believe it is. I have, I have now, he idea. also talks about the song Deep Reference, where he references Kendrick. Listen to this. Now, here's what he said happened. He was on Sway in the morning, and he did say that Kendrick reached out to him. And um, even when he heard Deep Reverence, you know, he hit me and was like, yo, I appreciate you showing that love. I appreciate that love in the verse, man. And you guys really, you and Nip went crazy. Like, y'all gasped on it. So it was good to just get that response from your brother. Mm-hmm. Because on that record, I just was keeping it open and honest and real. It was not out of disrespect either it was just out of respect for myself and for the things i learned along the way people might need to hear that 
See, that's good. A misunderstanding and somebody addresses it and then the person reaches out. That's how problems should get resolved, right? That's right. Brothers be brothers brothers be having to check their egos, man. It just be a bunch of ego 90% of the time. And if you lead with ego, you're going to be beefing and button heads for no reason. But if you lead with your soul, you're going to be like, man, F all that. Life's too short. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, 6 Nines album was number four in the first week with 53,000 equivalent album units earned. Now, they said Billboard had disqualified over 100,000 of his merch bundles. So he thought he was going to have the number one album. But because of that, he's not down to number four. Little Baby is the first artist of 2020 to go double platinum with his Shout album, My Baby. Turn. So congratulations to him. He posted My Turn, first and only album to go two times platinum, highest selling and streaming album of 2020. Two times platinum in six and a half months. Lil Baby, you did it. Yeah, I love Lil you Baby. Talk- he's right up there working hard. He's out there giving back. He's out there helping his hood. He's out there pushing. Yeah, I, I, I really love what Lil Baby's doing. Congratulations yeah, to Lil Baby. With the little baby in QC. Now, E, when you talk about the man who, de- who, who debuted at number four, can those album sales maintain you that level of security what do you because mean because you're not on the road right now right so i guess the only way to pay, pay the bills is with the screaming can those type of album sales maintain you that level of security can you afford that kind of security with those type of numbers i guess if you're not really going anywhere you should be okay well you know he's <laughs> he's still performing i know they gave him a, a bunch of millions of dollars to perform on some site that he has coming up in a little bit but to answer okay. your question no if he keeps doing right. those type of numbers, his money, I'm sure, will keep you know decreasing, and, and and the security will probably go from fifteen to twelve to ten to five to four to one. And that's when it that's when it gets fun. <laughs> <sighs> All right. <laughs> well, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your rumor report. 